in this place. I want you to notice if you're male or female here. Male. Male. Very good. Tell me more. What's happening? I'm in an old, old ship. Mm -hmm. A wooden ship. Yes. Very rough seas. Mm -hmm. And I've been thrown into the bottom of the ship. What are you doing the on the darkness. bottom? Mm -hmm. What is it that you're doing on the bottom of that ship? I'm a peasant or a servant. Mm -hmm. And they've thrown me with a whole bunch of other people. They want to sell us. They're slaves. Yes. So I want you to just focus on your feelings now. What's going on? I go from petrified to rage. They are scream and shout. Mm -hmm. But then I curl up into a ball and become incredibly scared. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to advance a little bit more now and tell me what happens next. We've been stripped naked mm -hmm. and we have been paraded in front of incredibly wealthy people. Mm -hmm. So I want you to take a moment and look at yourself in this very, very exposed position. Look at your skin. What is the color of your skin? I'm an albino. I'm white. Mm. You're white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's white yes. hair. Are you the only one that looks like this? Yes, the rest are black. Mm -hmm. They're all gasping at me. As they have not seen somebody with such white skin before. Mm -hmm. But I'm dirty. A lot of dirt on me and grub. Yes. And this body, is it an old body or a young body? Notice how old this is. I'm in my 30s. Mm -hmm. What do they but call you? Young. They look young. What do they call you? Elfie. Elfie. Mm -hmm. So Elfie, let's find out what happens next. I'd like for you to continue and see what happens as you are paraded in front of these people. Some of the people are being whooped. Some of the slaves are being whooped. Yes. Some of the, and we've been pushed whilst these very wealthy people are drinking champagne and they're whispering and laughing at all of us. And we told to move forward. Yes, continue. And they start to bid on us. It becomes like an auction. Mm -hmm. This is on the ship? This is off on land. Mm -hmm. So they've led us onto... It's, it's like a private island mm -hmm. where the rich and famous go to. And it's done in real secrecy. As this is illegal. Mm -hmm. It's not legal what they're doing. Yes. But they're bartering and bargaining because I'm the one that stands out. Mm -hmm. And Elfie, what year is this place? 1814. Mm -hmm. And where is this island? Close to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So what happens with you, Alfie? I'm bought by a young woman who is a princess. 
-hmm. And she wants to take me under her wing. And she wants to treat me like an equal, which I'm surprised about. Mm -hmm. As my understanding was I was going to be sold to be a slave and work. Yes. Which is intrigued by how I look and where I come from. Mm -hmm. So what happens oh. next? I want you to advance and see what happens once she takes you under her wing. We become really good friends and she starts to treat me as an equal. Mm -hmm. What do you call her? Sarah. Look into Sarah's eyes, the eyes of the window to the soul. Have you seen those eyes before? The first time I'm seeing her. Mm -hmm. She's unique. Yes. What is so unique about her? Her laugh and her smile and her heart. Very mm -hmm. pure. Mm -hmm. What happens next? Move forward. Her father is not happy with the choice that she has made and how she has befriended me as I was meant to be a slave, not a friend. And this is causing upheaval within the environment that she mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. It's creating confusion and concern and I I don't I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to be sold again. I don't want to I don't want to live. I, I've already been taken out of my roots, which was Africa. I was stolen as a young, young boy. So I want to die. I'd rather die. And I'm asking her, begging her and pleading her, please let me die. Mm -hmm. I can't be sold again. All right, so I want you to Stop right there, and I'm going to count from one to three when I get to number three. We'll see the conclusion of this life. One, two, and three. What happens? She helped me to escape. She put me on a boat, and she gave me lots of lots of gold coins or gold, lots of gold in a bag. Mm -hmm. And she wished me well. And I'm being shown, I, I drifted. I drifted, but I felt happy and content. Yes. So I want you to continue to drift and see what happens. I'm getting caught up in a, a vortex within the sea that's going round and round and round. Mm -hmm. And my boat is getting caught up in that, almost like a tornado, and I'm being sucked to the bottom. So tell me what's happening to your body as you're being sucked down to the bottom. I feel bliss. I feel content. Mm -hmm. Such inner peace. There's a knowing inside of me that it's all going to be okay. What happens next? Mm -hmm. Everything's going. changed. Everything's changed. We, I'm now in... I've gone back into the light. Mm -hmm. Into the star system. Yes. It's dark, but it's bright. Okay. And now we're going to take your soul out of there. 
And I want you to think of a color that represents healing for that lifetime. What color do you Black like? green. Very good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strike the tuning fork. And I want you to feel your body full of that green. Knowing now that that body died. And with that death, that experience is over. None of that experience belongs to you any longer. You're going to take all of your energy from that. Fill it with green and take your soul from there and breathe that green in feeling that this green now is part of your soul leaving that body to rest in peace releasing yourself from that body and i want you to bring part of that soul whatever soul was there that was left bring it with you Reunite with it and tell me when you are in that light with those angels. I'm here now. Mm -hmm. And now that you're there, what do they tell you about this experience that you've had? We have always. <clears throat> always notice your light even in the darkest of times and we have been around you continuously through these times that have served a purpose mm -hmm. for your growth for your evolution what is the purpose of having been born an albino in that lifetime to show my uniqueness mm -hmm. and to be accepting of being different yes. in my uniqueness. So <clears throat> I hadn't accepted it in previous lifetimes mm -hmm. and they had to change my color. They had to yes. change my complete color. My eyes were piercingly blue. My hair was white, short and curly. And I was an African person. So amongst all my village, my people, I had to stand out even more so to deal with this shame that I'd been feeling for such a long time. Mm -hmm. And how has that shame been reflecting in the lifetime of Michelle in this life? In many, many ways, through her parents, through her siblings, through her failed <clears throat> relationships, for her not finding a voice. Yes. And how she has dimmed herself since she was a little girl in the experiences that she's manifested and created and the shame of <clears throat> being sexually abused was the biggest one. Mm -hmm. And then the next biggest one was knocking over the young girl mm -hmm. and then the next one was her divorce yes so there were massive moments in her life where there had to be what a human would see it as massive yet for her it has been almost riding a wave on a surfboard and every now and again she gets dunked <clears throat> and swallowed that sea water. Yes. And then she comes up again. Mm -hmm. And she rides that wave. And she is stronger each time. Very good. I'm going to count from one to three. And when I get to number three, we'll go to the next point where this soul needs to heal. One. Two. And three. You're there now. I want you to notice how old you are. I'm an old man. Mm -hmm. In Victorian times. Yes. And I have 
one of those big white wigs on. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I'm the opposite. I am an egotistical, arrogant man who treats women like they're all prostitutes. Mm-hmm. I don't trust anybody. I don't like anybody. I don't like myself. What do you call yourself? Mm-hmm. Archie. Mm-hmm. Archie, how old are you? 75. Mm-hmm. And I imagine, Archie, you've lived a long life. I have, yes. Mm-hmm. So, Archie, what's happening now? What's the importance of this moment now? Self-healing and self-love is something that I've never learned. Mm -hmm. I was abandoned by my mother as a young boy. And I have treated women in a not loving way. Mm -hmm. So this moment is defining that I want I want to die having peace in my heart and my soul. Very good. So Archie, in order to find peace in your heart, we need to go back to the point in which your heart was broken. We're going to go back into that moment in time right before your mother abandoned you. I'm going to count from one to three. When I get to number three, we'll be there. One, two, and three. You're there. What's happening? I'm a baby. I'm a little baby boy. And I've just been birthed. And the umbilical cord is still attached to my mother. And she's shaking her head saying, I can't keep him. I can't keep him. My parents will disown me. Mm-hmm. And the cord is cut, and I'm taken away, and I feel her devastation. And she's so full of shame about how I was conceived. She was raped. Mm-hmm. So I really was angry in her womb. And I can feel how the anger has been in my liver. Mm -hmm. And there's just a sense of deep separation. And she's saying, take him, take him, take him, take him, please take him. Mm -hmm. Take him, I can't hold him, I can't look at him. (laughs) Because I love him too much but I don't want him because he was conceived in a bad way yes so somewhere as a baby I became so angry so Archie I want you to notice as your mother is telling them I can't keep him I can't keep him where is your soul at that time it's it's like it's left it's not in me it's 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 left Yes. There's so much emptiness. Yes. And this emptiness that you feel, I want you to notice how this is affecting you. I love the life of being and feeling empty. Mm -hmm. I've always been angry. Angry at people, angry at my teachers. Angry as a teenager, and then I started abusing alcohol. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know what it was like to be accepted or loved. Yes. So it was easier just to abuse myself and abuse others and not care. It was easier to not care. Mm -hmm. What has been the most difficult part of this life?
not being or feeling loved. Mm-hmm. Because I've just realized I went, went from one home to the next, to the next, to the next. And the more I showed them how angry I was, the more they pushed me to the next home and the next home. Mm-hmm. So even in foster care, nobody liked me or loved me. Yes. That was the most difficult. I'm riddled with so much guilt and shame. Mm-hmm. I get heartburn yes. and indigestion <clears throat> and this gunk in my throat continuously because I, I just want to scream. I'm just so angry at the world. Mm-hmm. Just deep sadness. Mm-hmm. And yeah. such a sense of being alone. Yes. And lonely. So lovely. Yes. What has been the most difficult part? Doing things on my own and not trusting mm-hmm. myself or people, more people and feeling so disconnected from humans. Yes. That's been the most difficult. It is doing it alone, 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 alone. And people taking me for granted because they see how much money I have. Mm-hmm. Very good. The aloneness. The aloneness. So I want you to just continue on your journey. And I want you now, as I count from one to three, to go to the last day of your life there. One, two, and three. And tell me what's happening. I'm in bed. And I have short breath Mm -hmm. I know that I'm passing over soon dying soon and I have one one maid one person who's standing in the corner Mm -hmm. she doesn't want to be close to the bed because she's scared I'm going to shout at her yes I want you to look at her eyes. Have you seen those eyes before? I have. Mm -hmm. This was Sarah from her previous life. Mm -hmm. She's petrified of me. She can't understand why I'm such an angry and alone and sad man. So tell me what happens next with your body. What do you what happens to your body as you feel your breath getting shorter and shorter? Notice how your lungs are being affected. I feel like <clears throat> everything's constricting and <clears throat> okay. Mm-hmm. Notice how your throat is being mm. affected. Yeah. Hack, mm-hmm. can't breathe. Yes. And I just want to say, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yes. So I want you to tell me what is the last thought that that brain has before you leave that body? I forgive myself and I forgive my mother. Mm -hmm. What happens next to your soul? Goes back into the light. Mm -hmm. It leaves the body as it takes its last breath. Yes. And goes back into the field, Mm -hmm. the quantum of light. What do your angels tell you this time about that life? What did you need to learn from that lifetime? That the masculine energy isn't always the driving energy or the forceful energy. It is sometimes needed to push forward. Yet it is okay to bring in the feminine even more so 
as the feminine balances and creates equal balance. And it is a strength which I have not been taught in this life of Michelle. Mm -hmm. I want you to now to scan your lifetime and see if there's anything else that your soul needs to heal from the lifetime of Michelle. I'm going to count from one to three and let me know if there's any other part in which this soul was fragmented. One, two, and three. What comes up? When the connection, the soul connection between Michelle and this other feminine energy, Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when Michelle's car hit mm-hmm. this young woman, yes, it was like Michelle's soul left again, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it hasn't really landed back inside of her. Okay, so I'd like for you to find her. Where is that piece of the soul? It's gone into a dark place. Mm-hmm. So I'd like for you to go ahead and find her. Find where she is. She's in the portal. Mm -hmm. Talk to her. Why is she there hiding? It's easier to hide. It's easier to live in this different dimension. So I want you to explain to her that in order for you to do your work, that you need to be whole, that your soul cannot be fragmented in this life. We've picked up the pieces already, and there's a lot of work to be done, that she is safe now, that everything has turned out okay. Talk to her. She's coming out, and she didn't understand this. She didn't know that that this was a possibility. Yes. She thought she had to stay hidden mm-hmm. and live in that doubt and have those deep, dark thoughts. Yes. So she wants to rejoin the wholeness mm-hmm. of where Michelle's at. Allow her to rejoin. And while she's doing that, we're going to call forward the spirit of that young girl. And so she can explain what the reason was that this happened. One, two, and three. Hello there. Hi. Can you tell me your name, please? My name is Nuncla. Nuncla. That's correct. Yes, Nuncla. Can you tell me what was the soul agreement that you had with Michelle? I was meant to be a wake-up call for Michelle Mm -hmm. so that she could wake up to herself. Yes. As she'd been sensing and dealing with so much pain for such a long time. Mm -hmm. So in my guidance of where I was at, I did not see her coming with her car. And it was a pure coincidence Yet the soul connection was a binding of two souls who had experienced a lot of trauma. And I too had wanted to leave my body for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I did not do this or run across the road on purpose. It was not an act of suicide. It was a pure accident. Yet there still was no waking up with inside of Michelle. Michelle's habit was to run. Michelle's habit was to flee, to escape, as we have already noticed the pattern. Yes. So the devastation of within the story of taking a life, not in a malicious way, is where people 
wake up and listen to when Michelle talks about her story. People go into a lower vibration when it comes to the hearing of her sexual abuse. People go into a really different vibration and noticing of an aha moment when they hear about their interaction between myself and Michelle. Mm -hmm. So in our stories together, in the story of taking my human life, it is a very powerful story for Michelle to share with others and how she is keep, keeping on her healing path of transformation. And it is so interesting as I was a young African girl. Mm -hmm. yes. And it was within this collision where there was no color. There was no white and dark or dark and white. It was just an alignment. Mm -hmm. And the devastation that Michelle had held on to is where the power has lied with inside of her. Mm -hmm. So Nuncla, I'd like for you to assist me if you would. I'd like for you to talk with that part of her soul that ran away, that is now coming back to integrate. What would you like to tell that part of her soul? There is no more running. There is no more escaping. There is the facing within the alignment of the vibration of where the energy is felt. So Michelle is becoming a master at integrating the feeling within the body. And as she is becoming a master within the integration period, she is able to hold space and notice how energy changes within a human being. She is able to fine tune almost as if she is looking through a small needle and she can see in the top of the needle, she can see very clearly what is happening within the energetic vibration of the human or humans that come into her space. So this was a very real time in Michelle's life of integrating all her past pain. So in the devastation of knocking over and taking or killing my old body in this lifetime, it was where Michelle started to align in her vibration as previously the anger consumed her, but the devastation and the sadness is what started to help Michelle to heal. Wonderful. So I'd like for you to see if that part of Michelle's soul has integrated completely now. It is back and it is whole. Very good. Do you have any other message, Nunkla, for, for me or for Michelle? Elba, I'd like to start with you. The work that you are doing with the humans, these humans, that seem to be experiencing so much within their pain bodies. We collectively, not only myself as a spirit, but spirits collectively are incredibly humbled by your knowledge and your guidance and how you help humans to feel safe on their journeys. You are a being of light, as you know. And we have noticed your journey yourself, where you have felt the inner turmoil and the body pain. There has been a pain that has been within your jaw, 
that is connecting to your shoulder, connecting to your inner ear, which is connecting into your gallbladder. So we would ask you to do a cleansing of some sort. A cleansing of water, a celery cleansing, a beetroot cleansing, somewhere where your body can digest and the cells can regenerate to help this healing as this is a pattern that is stagnant within your vibration over. Mm -hmm. What would you do if uh, I don't have a gallbladder? Is this my etheric body? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. There is memory there. Yes. As you know, as you are taking Michelle down her old past lives or past memories that the body feels, there's memory towards an old partner, memory towards acidic, old. And if you notice Michelle's hands, mm -hmm. this kind of feeling within the vibration of that within where the gallbladder once was. Mm -hmm. So it is going in and also within your knuckles, Alba. Mm -hmm. There is something going on, inflammation, where you might be feeling that your knuckles need to be shedding, mm -hmm. letting go of the old energy. So as we are showing you this exercise right now, this is the simpleness of it, is showing the old energy where to go. Releasing, releasing. A kind of inflamed inflammation within the thumb joints. Mm -hmm. So we hope this answers your question. Very good. Thank you, Ninkla, for that. Is there anything that we can do for all of those spirits that have been unjustly slaughtered in Africa? There is nothing that one human can do, yet collectively, what we would invite humans to do is send a thought to those souls that ended in darkness and suppression and send white light to these souls so that they can ascend into where we are at, back into the light. Very good. Thank you so much. Nicola, I'd like to thank you and I appreciate your, um, your message to me. I know that many spirits are always watching and assisting me and I want to thank you for acknowledging that. We thank you as collectively mm. we do watch the work that you do and your heart is filling up and filling up with the alignment of other human beings who want to give back to you as much as you give to others. Mm, thank you. So we thank you. Thank you very much. Nukla, who can assist me today with the knees? Michelle is having some issues with the knees. Who can assist me? Archangel Michael is here. Very good. Thank you. So I'd like to thank you and send you back to the light. And like I'd like to address Archangel Michael at this time. Thank you very much. I am here. Thank you. Michael, can you tell me what's going on with these knees? Why are they clicking? She needs to go skiing again sometime. There has been a inner clicking mm -hmm. that Michelle has had within her vibration for centuries already. There has been a, a lack of inner awareness and a lack of inner boundaries that Michelle is realizing that she needs to establish with herself and with others. Mm -hmm. Michelle is by heart a natural giver. She gives and 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 gives. And 
those on the receiving end will take and take and take and take and take as those on the receiving end love to be in Michelle's vibration as she is by nature of who she is an incredibly upbeat human being who loves to laugh who loves to make fun of herself who loves to teach others how to find the inner joy in the most sadness saddening of times so her inner clicking is her inner knowing her inner clicking within her knees and the energy is shifting right now as i am coming through michelle mm -hmm. so she is noticing that this is very much about walking forward and equally about finding her balance which you have helped her to establish it today yes as there was very much a disassociation with both masculine and feminine energy mm -hmm. and now there's alignment happening within her body and the integration is happening from her feet moving all the way up as i am channeling through her wonderful and you spoke something about boundaries and she had a question about why why do we need the ego the ego is important for when I'm going to take that back and start with it is an inner ding like an inner bell that goes off with inside of a human being and as much as I'm showing you right now within Michelle's vibration of her hands that the inner ding happens here mm -hmm. it is the thought that happens yet the feeling happens before the thought mm -hmm. and often without the ego the inner ding happens which is the ego which is the part of the ego which is needed yet humans have been taught no ego no ego no ego we've got to push it out we don't need an ego especially the beings of light like yourself and Michelle and yet as you have clarified to Michelle early on in the conversation it is very much needed that the inner thought happens with the feeling and then the thought happens so it is a transferal amount of energy and it is listening to the ego in that moment yet it is fine tuning as you use your tuning forks elba mm -hmm. the vibration still goes on and on and on so it is listening to the inner ding and then what is the thought saying the ego is important mm -hmm. yet so many humans have been taught that it is not important and yet humans can be misunderstood between arrogance and ego ego can be seen as encouraging god's own and are we all not god every human is a cell and every cell has a memory and a vibration yet often humans are taught we are not god we look up to god yet humans are also nature yet it is the control in the mind which takes over we hope this makes sense mhm mm so the programming that we've been taught is what really is not the ego yes mm -hmm. it is the programming so as an example michelle's 10 year old son is going through what would be termed an egoic phase he likes to push back yet he is coming into his own knowing and with his parents that he has chosen this lifetime they get to push back and they get to teach him that it is okay that he has the knowing inside of him as one is taught rules from a very young age 
and this is where the conditioning is changing. Yet there's an extreme case of polar opposites happening within the vibration of many humans. So for someone like yourself, Alba, or Michelle's generation, there was the discipline, the boundaries, the hitting, the smacking, the discipline, the boundaries. The parents' boundaries and discipline was what would one would term barbaric. And now the complete opposite is when you have humans who are birthing younger generational children who have a lot of technology that is advancing them. And these humans, there is not much what one would term discipline happening or boundaries being given as humans that are being birthed are coming into this world quicker and faster. Yet the mothers and fathers are feeling like they are out of control. So they give up far too easily with setting boundaries with these younger kids. Mm -hmm. And it is these younger children where there is a need to have a boundary established, especially with modern technology. Mm -hmm. So there are polar opposites, extremes happening, and it is finding the balance and alignment within the middle. Very good. Can you explain what is it that was keeping Michelle feeling so stuck? Michelle had gone into an old karmic loop and pattern mm -hmm. of not trusting herself and not trusting the guidance that has been coming through to her. She is a highly connected individual to angelic beings that are out there. Yet as soon as she meets somebody who is equally a channeler or equally someone who connects to other beings out there, she immediately goes into that place of dimming her light mm. and not trusting herself. So the stuckness was a karmic pattern and a karmic thought that she kept bringing in into her vibration. And all she needed to do was trust herself in the moment. Yet she has made her life busy and the stuckness has come in where there are others who are turning to herself who are wanting more of her energy. And now she is relearning to find the balance with inside of herself. Mm -hmm. The stuckness is no longer. It is an open path. Very good. An open journey. Because she said she was not feeling that inner joy that you spoke about. She has dimmed her inner joy because of other people. Mm -hmm. And this has been, as you have discovered today, one of her life's journeys and life's lessons mm -hmm. is that she does not have to dim her light and her joy inside of her vibrational heart. As her vibrational heart is like her, her colors on her scarf, many different colors. And it is as if in this new town of Nelson, she is recalibrating who she is. What is it that brings her joy? Mm -hmm. And she is now starting to find alignment after the session she has had with you, Alba. And she Wonderful. has let go so much of what needed to be let go and shifted today. Wonderful. And as she finds this alignment, She's trying to find the alignment of her diet, wanting to eat what she loves to eat, and yet not knowing if this is right. What do you say about animal protein and how it affects the body? Animal protein is good for many, many human beings. What we would suggest and would like to see is for many more humans to choose 
a sustainable organic animal protein, an animal that has been blessed with love, mm -hmm. as that animal is willing to, what we would term, sacrifice themselves with love yes. to be able to feed Michelle's body and other humans who enjoy animal protein. Yet so many humans look at the animals with pity. So many humans look at the animals with guilt. And that vibration goes towards those animals. And yes, we know that a lot of these animals are being taken out of their bodies in a not so humanitarian way. Yet it is their soul's choice. Mm -hmm. They are coming back as these reincarnated souls. So there is a knowing with inside of them. And again, we do understand that humans want quick, they want fast. They want quicker, faster, quicker wireless, quicker, faster internet, faster eating. How can we go into the supermarket and buy something that is already put together? And it is in the slowing down, even in the slowing down of eating. So to answer Michelle's question, her body loves animal protein. And she has created a belief. And she has created a belief within here and here that it's not for her. Yet right now in this moment, it is for her. If we are to give her the picture of eating the meat that she has grown up with in South Africa, it would create her mouth to salivate. That's how much she has enjoyed it. As it creates a feeling within the body and a warmth within the body of missing the home country that she grew up in. It creates a connection when she meets other South Africans when they can speak about biltong and dry horse. It creates that feeling of warmth and connection. Yet again, there are so many vegans and so many meat eaters and so many vegetarians that judge one another. And if only there could be an acceptance in one another, there would be harmony within each other's bodies, would they not? Mm -hmm. Yes. So one of the questions was the soul's journey of animals regarding meat. Do they come here for that purpose? They do, Elba. They know their journey. And yet humans like to control. Well, humans like to think they can control. And it is in the feeling that has been created within the vibration, that when the thought of the human that looks at these individual animals, that they create an inner turmoil inside of themselves. Mm -hmm. These souls have a knowing. They know what they are reincarnating as. And yet humans still want to control the existence of these individual souls. Very so good. it is the thought about the thought about the thought about mm -hmm. the thought about the thought about the thought about the thought. And we could go on mm -hmm. and on and on and on. This reminds me of a long time ago when I asked a question about people who uh, were disabled and were um, going through very bad sicknesses. I used to work in a hospital setting and would feel very, very drained whenever I would see cancer patients in the hallways and I would see disabled people. And I was told, I was given um, a recommendation that when I see these people to understand that these are the bravest, most courageous souls that come here to experience this. So once I changed my perspective and looked at these people as courageous souls, my energy was no longer drained. I saw them in a different light. So now understanding this, when we see 
animals grazing, when we see sheep and cows and chickens, instead of feeling sorry for them because we know that they are being raised for meat. What should we be thinking of these animals when we see them so that they are not in turmoil? Thank you for your explanation and how you had to change your thoughts mm -hmm. around seeing individuals with cancer and who were disabled. How does one human not know that those human beings that have come into this body that we're not abled bodies. It is in the gifts that these people and individuals give to other humans on their journeys. As again, the soul knows what needs to be shifted, what needs to be learned in this lifetime. The same with these animals. If humans could only look at them and not look at all the media content that is going out there, that is creating such fear, such anger, such umbrance, such tumultuous thoughts. And again, notice the contraction when we are saying this within the body and the vibration. If a human being could look at these animals and say, thank you, we bless you, we honor you for this journey that you are embarking on to help us feel and feed our bodies. And no, we did not say this incorrectly, to help the human feel and feed the bodies. So again, it takes us into gratitude. Mm -hmm. Be grateful for every individual, whether you are eating a lettuce leaf, a bean sprout or a lamb leg. It is being grateful for everything that is so interconnected that that individual soul is giving of themselves to help this human. Very good. Thank you very much. So is there anything else that we need with Michelle before we move forward? From you. She is aligned. Very good. Thank you so much, Archangel Michael. I appreciate your assistance. And now I'd like for Michelle Soul to address the Council of Eight. I'm going to count from one to three. And I want you to see your soul addressing this council. One, two, and three. Tell me where you are. I am in an expansive, expansive, expansive quantum field where there is all and there is nothing. Mm -hmm. Notice what you look like there. I look like a jelly bean. <laughs> who has a very exciting energy, who's jumping up and down. Wonderful. And in this expansive place, how do you meet with the Council of Eight? They show themselves as these beautiful golden lights. Mm -hmm. They are gold and, and, and they shine so bright and it is as if one comes forward and then one goes back mm -hmm. and another comes forward and another comes back. So before we begin, what is the significance of the gold? The gold is a precious, precious commodity, is it not? Mm -hmm. Yes. It has been an exchange of energy throughout centuries 
where people have panned it, people have sourced it, yes, and then they have sold it or they have formed it into something where people wear on their human bodies. Mm-hmm. So we are showing up in this gold as we would like humans to know that we are solid. If you had to hold the piece of gold bar, you would have to be incredibly strong to lift it. We are showing up together as a strength in the gold. Mm -hmm. So what is the purpose of the Council of Eight? Is this a special group? We are a group of angelic beings. And we, in our sense of humor, would like to say, yes, we are special. We are unique. We are expansive. Mm -hmm. And we are individuals of light. We are souls that were once in human form. And we have reincarnated back into the light. We are showing up today in the session as we are individuals of uniqueness that are choosing the show to help other individuals of uniqueness. And every human being is unique, Alba. Yes. Yet every human being forgets as Michelle doubts herself, you sometimes have doubts of mm-hmm. yourself. Yes. And we want to let individuals know that it doesn't have to be complicated. Michelle has had a term for a very long time where she was gifted this term by a friend in her previous town of Queenstown called Keeping It Real. And we are showing up in the simpleness of who we are through the channeling that Michelle does. As we want humans in their journeys of love and light and spiritualness to keep it real. As so many humans we are finding in their journeys, in their journeys of self-discovery, self-love, that they put so much pressure on themselves to be like somebody else. And we are not wanting this for humanity no longer. We are wanting humans to keep it real and to be their authentic selves as they have forgotten how to be authentic. And so many humans on this journey of spirituality have perhaps been feeling like they've been walking on eggshells. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in this keeping it real, it is noticing and knowing that it is 100% okay that to be vulnerable, to be angry, to be frustrated, to be sad, to feel all these feelings of abandonment, rejection, frustration, the anxiety, that so many humans have been feeling in this last year and a half. That is keeping it real. That is feeling into the body and then allowing the body to let go in these moments of allowing the sadness and vulnerability or within the laughter and the joy, the body still lets go. And every time the body lets go, the expansion happens. Yet often we feel that humans are frowning in this journey of wanting to be spiritual. There's this underlying desperation. How can I feel spiritual? How can I be more spiritual? How can I? How can I? How can I? And this is not what we are wanting for human beings anymore. We are wanting to keep it light. We are wanting to keep it fun. We are wanting humans to start to learn to laugh at themselves again. The world has forgotten how to laugh, especially at themselves. 
So we want the frown on the forehead to become more open and expanded. Very good. Why was Michelle chosen by the Council of Eight to channel them? We are smiling <laughs> as we knew that Michelle was in fear of this question. <laughs> as look how she saw herself when we appeared to her, a little jelly bean. And does a human not want to eat not only one jelly bean? <laughs> They want to eat at least 25 to 50 jelly beans to feel satisfied. Mm -hmm. So we have chosen her as we are acknowledging her on this journey of seeking self-love. She is a joyful human being who brings so much joy in the ripple effect of her laughter and her smile. And it is not to say that she is the only unique individual that we are choosing at this time. We choose many individuals. As again, we would remind you that every individual is unique. We felt that this was her time to expand her growth. And we have been talking to her and suggesting that she puts the connections that we are giving to her, the messages that we are showing up for her and others to expand it onto her YouTube channel. Yet again and again and again, she likes to play small like a little jelly bean. Yet, if you take a whole bunch of jelly beans and you take them in two different hands, you have a multicolor amount of jelly beans, do you not? Yes. And they bring so much joy, even though they are loaded with so much sugar. <laughs> Yet when you eat all these jelly beans, what does sugar do to one? It creates a really exciting energy within an individual. Mm -hmm. So hence, this is why we have chosen her. As again, she is like the color and the different colors on her scarf. And she is multicolored and she can shape like a chameleon and she can transform her colors with every individual that sits in front of her or every individual that comes into her vibration. Is there anyone in particular that channels through her or is it the collective? We are the collective. Mm -hmm. So as Archangel Michael came through earlier on, he took his place in the background again. Mm -hmm. And we show up as many different energies. Today, we are showing up as Nelson Mandela, mm, beautiful. as Gandhi, as Mary Magdalene, as Princess Diana. Are they all part of the collective? They are all part of the collective. Wonderful. Thank you. It's an honor to to speak with all of you. Albert, it is our honor to speak to you today through Michelle. As we know that you are sharing your messages far and wide. You are touching people's lives in so many ways. So we are the honored ones. Mm, thank you. And please do not think of us as the humans that we were once. <laughs> we are energy. We are light. We are spirit. Wonderful. And as spirits that can see things from a different perspective, I know there's a lot of things going on in the world right now where people are, are feeling changes, shifts, energies that are going on. Can you talk about that a little bit, especially these energies that we're feeling at this moment? We have a word for many light individuals, and it is neurotic. Mm, okay. Can humans please stop being neurotic? 
it is a kind of vibration that feels like lightning mm. and lightning strikes does it not and when yeah. it strikes if you had to google or look at the hometown where michelle comes from she grew up as a little girl being scared of lightning mm. because lightning can strike right in the bedroom yet if you are up on a hilltop and you watch lightning it strikes and it creates this effect of an, a massive light and massive connection. So sometimes we have noticed in the last year and a half that there is this vibration of humans becoming neurotic in the energy that is coming down towards the earth. It is as simple as a breath that has been taken in. There has been so much energy in different parts of the world that has been a neurotic, frenetic, frantic energy. Has it not, Alba? Yes. You have felt it in the United States, have you not? Yes. So it, it is bringing an individual into themselves, aligning with one breath, at a time mm -hmm. and again going into the breath is what will help humans reconnect to themselves as yes there's a lot of fresh energy there are many energetic waves that are coming in and sometimes the energy can feel like those vibrant lightning strikes yes. so the lightning strikes and if you're able to see it it is incredibly bright and it can jolt one out of their body yet if you listen as you have well noticed with doing your book the discourse mm -hmm. the thunder then ripples afterwards and the thunder can be a sense of almost an uncomfortability within one's vibration and body yet one can look at it as a stomach that is grumbling because it is hungry or a stomach that is shifting from the breath because it is expanding out. So many humans hold a lot of their feelings and vibrations within their stomachs. And as you have created space within Michelle's body today, breath expands one. Yet often humans function at this vibration. And we would ask humans to function at this vibration, creating expansion within the stomach and the heart and the body and the mind. Wonderful. Thank you. I have a question, which is a personal one about the tuning forks that I'm using. I'm finding that they really change your vibration quite a bit when you strike those tuning forks and do the chakra balancing. How does that affect the field around you? Do those vibrations continue on? They absolutely do. And we are so honored that you are using the different vibrations and the different sounds. As have you noticed that when you use these tuning forks on yourself, have you noticed how long the frequency can go on for? Yes. Mm -hmm. It can go on and on and on and on. And it's within the hearing that the frequency can be heard. Yet within the vibration of the body, every cell is being retuned. Every cell has been revibrated every cell is being realigned and we want you to know as you notice michelle's hands mm -hmm. that it is very subtle and yes. the vibration is felt in a very subtle way yet if a human being is in their mind and they are busy it may cause discomfort within the body mm -hmm. they may not be feeling as if they are aligning with these tuning forks. Yes. Elba, you are onto something. 
you are onto a magical reconnection with the body, the mind, the spirit. The vibration is calm. It is felt within the heart center. And as you know, the heart, it has a vibrational reverberation, which is beyond tangible. It is a sense, a sensation, a feeling that humans are still discovering as to how much this center, this soul, how it continues its ripple effect. Mm -hmm. We hope this answers your question. Yes, very good. Is there anything else that you would like to tell Michelle or anybody else at this time? Or do you feel that we are complete? We would ask that human beings continue on their journeys of love, self-love. And in the words of Dr. Joe Dispenza, he says, are you doing the work? And we are using a finger pointed as we would ask every individual listening to this right now, are you doing the work? Are you doing the work? And if you notice, there is one finger going out and three fingers, four fingers coming back. Yes. So, Alba, are you doing the work? <laughs> and in doing the work with humans like yourself, with yeah. humans like Michelle, with humans like Jill, every single human that is reconnecting to themselves and realigning with themselves and re-loving themselves will find their joy. Yet the biggest connection that they are making to themselves or reconnection is learning to laugh at themselves and learning to laugh at the disastrous frequency that has been vibrated out in the media. As many humans have gone within as, that they, as they have had to go within. And now it is time to come out, expand, reconnect with holding hands, reconnect with hugging, as there's been so much fear within the vibration. And now it is refining the joy, the laughter, the sense of humor, as we are saying to you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Laugh. Find fun in yourself. The more you laugh at yourself, the more the world will laugh with you and not at you. Beautiful. Thank you very much for that. And with that, I'm going to end the session with the striking of the solar plexus tuning fork so we can release all of those energies for all of those who are listening. begin to come back as I count from one to five. One, beginning to come back now. Two, three, four, and five. Welcome back. Thank you. Wow. Sure. <laughs> wow. Wow. Do what you feel like you do you feel like you've been through the spin cycle? 
<laughs> it's interesting you should say that because as you were doing that last tuning fork, I was like, okay, my solar plexus, I'm going to feel in there. But it's literally the vibration went from there to there to there to there to my wow. big toe. To, it, was, it was so expansive. I was like, yep, that's why she's doing this work. It's amazing. It was a great session. Oh, thank you. Wow. What a beautiful, I mean, the sun is so bright right now and it's so warm in here. <laughs> so uh, we did a lot. We did a lot of work. Um, you know, obviously we had some really great messages at the end, which would be nice yeah. to share. Oh, I'd love that. Yes. Right? Yes. Now, I know that you were probably in a different place. How long do you think this session was? Um, if gosh, you had to guess. I want to say three hours. It felt to me like it was three hours. <laughs> How long was it? <laughs> it's about two. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. We did a lot of well, work. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And it just amazes me, you know, like coming up again with my, my uncle stuff again. Yeah. You know, it, it just, it really just shows me how there are many different levels and layers. And yeah, yeah. and what I loved was being an albino. Oh my gosh. Isn't that amazing? And my African roots were so strong. That's great. That was profound. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, those past lives are a real thing, hey? Yo. Yeah. And you so, went from one extreme to another blew my mind like even when I was that old man in the bed and then I noticed the maid who was Sarah I think it was yes yeah Sarah mm -hmm. when I saw her again I was like wow we are we're so interconnected there's so many we it's are we're back. all remeeting yes yeah yeah it's phenomenal it's so, amazing so phenomenal so um we want to share some of this not all uh, of it but share yes. but the part where it's not personal I don't mind it all being shared because you know well, what? Well, I can't share all of that. That has we have techniques was there some, that, I, that, oh, I was there some, that are not oh. that are not uh, publishable. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I hear you. Okay, there's a lot that I'm clearly still processing, you know. But yeah. absolutely, whatever you feel is necessary, I'm yeah. very humbled and 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 happy and so just. Oh gosh, I don't have any words. Just such. Oh, it was amazing. Thank you, Alba. You're welcome. Thank you. So wow. would you like to tell everybody who you are, where you are, and what you do? <laughs> Get yourself comfortable there. Get myself comfortable. Okay. Um, is my makeup smudge? That's all I want to know. <laughs> it always, it always, that's, that's it always it. is. <laughs> Let me wipe these dry tears that have um, caked on my face. Um, Okay, so I am Michelle Carpenter. I am a spiritual medium. I connect with loved ones who have passed over. And I'm a grief and trauma intuitive and energy and vibrational healer. And I am so honored to be able to sit opposite you today, Alba. And I, I just want to share joy, you know, through the experiences of life. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not getting stuck on one of those labels because we can be everything. We can be so expanded in, in, in our unlimitedness of life. And um, I'm in awe of the work that you continuously do with individuals. Thank you. Oh, you. God. It's, um, Thank you. Well, it's, it's, it's a labor of love for sure because, um, you know, it's, it's, it looks easy, but it's a lot of work. For sure. And even when you're coming with your questions, I think, oh, my God, that was a phenomenal question, you know. <laughs> I, and then I go, shit, how am I going to answer this? I'm like, okay, just give it away. Just let it go. It's all going to come. Sound in, like Jill you know? now. <laughs> 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 like Jill, who's always, who's always. Uh... Always freaking doubting ourselves. Eh? And yes, yes. Things. <laughs> so we talked about South Africa, but uh, tell everybody where you actually are. I am in Nelson, New Zealand. It's a beautiful, beautiful town, and it so resonates with me um, being an ex-South African, as I think most of you might know, the late Nelson Mandela. And a very beautiful story, if I may share it quickly, yes. is um, my son, who is 10 years old, his name is Cade. He was born 
on the final of the World Cup soccer in the 11th of July, 2010. And the day that he was born was one of the last times that the world saw Nelson Mandela alive internationally. And the, the final was held in Johannesburg, in a stadium in Johannesburg. And he came three and a half weeks early. And the vibration was so massive within South Africa because we were all just so high and blowing our vivuzelas. And, and I remember I decided to have an emergency C-section and uh, my gynecologist said to me, now South Africa was known as the rainbow nation because of all the colors of the different people and uh, the change that we had gone through. And my gynecologist was an Indian woman. My anesthetist was this, was this black Rastafarian. I remember he had this, these long dreadlocks. I think that there was a nurse who was a, a colored lady and there was another, well, we were the whiteies in the room basically. And, um, and I remember my gynecologist stitching me up saying, oh my God, Michelle, I'm so grateful that you had a C-section because I just wanted to see Nelson Mandela tonight in the stadium. <laughs> 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 so this little beautiful town of Nelson, which is going through massive developments and stages mm -hmm. of newness, just reminds me of the vibration of Nelson Mandela and the ripple effect that he created in the world. Beautiful. And that's on the South Island of New Zealand. It's on the South Island. It's on the top of the South Island, the north of the South Island. Yes. yes. Yeah. Right across from Wellington. Right across from Wellington. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And it's, I'm going to be back there. I was going to say, we're waiting going for back. you, Alba. We're there's waiting no way. <laughs> with, with, with so many Kiwis that I, that I know now, there's no way I'm, sure. I'm not going back there. For so. sure. We, we'll, we'll go up to Castle Hill. How's that sound? <laughs> That sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. That sounds really good. Yeah. So how can people get a hold of you? Um, I have my website, which is um, www.michellecarpenter.co.nz. Um, if you go on there, I have a booking system. Um, there's still some photos, which I might have my blonde hair. I went through a bit of a transformational stage. <laughs> and um, But there's my story on there. Um, but you can book for a session. Um, or alternatively, you can just contact me via text message or WhatsApp. Um, I'd love to hear from anyone and everyone that I can help bump up on their journey. Beautiful. And how long yeah. are your sessions? They're an hour and a half. Mm. And I'm currently charging 220 New Zealand dollars um, for an hour and a half session. And I never know what comes through. Um, I just get completely guided in the moment and we laugh, we cry together. We have some fun, weird moments, and I often use music. I get guided by music as well, which yeah. is really, really like my angels will sing a tune in my song, a song in my head or a tune, and then I use Spotify to. Um, wow. Yeah. That's yeah, amazing. It's... That's amazing. So yeah. today we use tuning forks on you. How did that, that, how did that affect you during the session? Oh, my gosh. Amazing. It yeah. really gets a person to go deeper in. Um, mm -hmm. But even when I did that last, uh, when we did that group session on your support group, yes, it's something that my body completely vibrates with. And I can just beautiful. hear it go on and on and on. I love them. Beautiful. I love them. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. That's terrific. Well, thank you very much. And I'd like to thank everybody for watching uh, uh, thank this, you, this, uh, this session. And, you know, if you want to get a hold of me, just go to my website, albawyman.com. You de do need to subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, it comes out once a month. It uh, has a link to a calendar there of my next month's session. So um, I hope I get to meet you either at a session or also I do frequency sessions with the tuning forks. They're scalar mm -hmm. wave frequencies. And I also do gatherings about once a month. So I hope I get to meet you at one of those too. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for watching and I will see you at the next video. Thank Much you, love. Alba. Bye. -bye.